How you doing, honey? How you doing? You okay? You okay? Okay, we're almost there, so just hang in there. You doing okay? You doing okay? Are you feeling okay, honey? You feeling okay, honey? You look well. Are you okay? Are you okay? Oh my God! Can we get some help in here? I think my husband had a stroke. Stay back, sir. We're going to need help. You're having a stroke. At this moment, you're confused, unable to talk, unable to move your arm. It would appear there's nothing you or your family can do to stop it. Without help, your life may slip away. I felt a pain in the back of my head. My left eye went blank and it went gray, basically. And I came inside the house and uh, called out to my stepson to come look at it. I didn't even think the word stroke. I felt no pain. I just felt a little dizzy and went down. And I was trying to get up, but I couldn't get up. I didn't feel any pain in there. I was just standing there talking. And next thing you know, my wife looked down and said, can you get up? Did you trip? I said, I don't know. I just went down. In the uh, initial years of my training, I remember that managing stroke was not an emergency. Uh, patients will come to the emergency department. They will be looked at, but they were not the highest priority. This was uh, the beginning, which is very different than what we do today. Now an evolution in stroke coordination and treatment is taking shape. Procedures that use tiny catheters to travel into the brain and stop a stroke as it's happening are giving patients hope for brain attacks. Now we've really hit you know, the sweet spot where we have devices that work, we have a better understanding of the pathophysiology, the timing, the imaging that's required, and that uh, we're really getting good outcomes. The clock is ticking for two men who put their lives into the hands of a team that has changed stroke care in Michigan and in the world. by the minds of medicine. This is their story. Hello and welcome to Minds of Medicine. I'm Paul W. Smith, standing inside the interventional radiology lab of Henry Ford Hospital, where patients from all over the metro Detroit area are brought to have their stroke treated. Strokes occur nearly 800,000 times every year. They cause one out of every 20 deaths in this country. And although we have learned more about the cause of stroke, including cardiovascular disease, and smoking, medicine has been able to do very little about extending the window of time to treat a stroke. That is, until now. Doctors and researchers at the Henry Ford Stroke Center are streamlining the way patients are treated during a stroke, cutting hours down to minutes. It's been a focus of their team for over 30 years. One of the physicians who's been here throughout this time is the chairman of the Department of Neurology Dr. Stanton Elias. What happens to the brain during a stroke is that we have, well, we have two types. One in which we have a blood vessel that is clogged or occluded, and another, of course, where there is hemorrhage. And what we're talking about primarily now is those in which the blood vessel is, is closed, is occluded with either a clot or uh, with atherosclerosis, hardening of the arteries. What happens to the brain beyond that is that it loses blood supply, it loses oxygen, so therefore the, it cannot maintain itself, it begins to die. The warning signs of stroke can be difficult to detect. Slurred speech, severe and sudden headache, numbness or weakness on one side of the body. For Pat Baker, his symptoms were subtle and began as he was walking his dog. I was out walking at 7.30 in the morning, and my eye, left eye crossed over, and it caused me to stop and concern, because uh, it never happened before. It went away after about 30 seconds, and it, it uh, cleared up, and I, I went and got a haircut, and I drove, uh, went and got a golf lesson also. And when I came home, 
Um, my left eye went blank. It went gray, basically. But as doctors would soon discover, his stroke was caused from an enormous clot, and his life was in serious danger. Recognizing the urgency of his symptoms, Pat's wife, Debbie, rushed him to urgent care, and then Henry Ford Macomb Hospital. It was this quick thinking that greatly improved Pat's chances of survival. We checked into Henry Ford Macomb, and they took my uh, blood pressure and temperature and put me in a room. And uh, I was explaining to Debbie the fact that my, my golf lesson, she was chatting with me about it, and I was moving my hand and trying to show her something going straight and only went up this high. <laughs> and I started to basically slur, and, and uh, my right side froze up. And they did the smile for us and lift your right leg and your um, right arm and such. And I couldn't do any of it. Rapid evaluation and treatment is the key to avoiding many of the long-term complications of a stroke. For much of the last two decades, this has involved administering the drug TPA. This drug works to break up the clot as long as it's given quickly enough and the clot responds to treatment. As soon as Pat came out, which was the quickest CAT scan ever, um, they said, yep, and so they started putting the uh, TPA in. Uh, and then Dr. Brody pulled me aside and said, I really think he needs to get to Detroit. He said, I've talked to the neurosurgeon. There's uh, an operation he may or may not need to have. And uh, so we'd like to get him there. And I said, okay, you know, what do we have to do? And he kind of smiled and said, I've already called the helicopter. It was pretty obvious uh, when the diagnostic angiogram was done that uh, despite having used intravenous TPA, the vessel was still blocked. So there was no flow going essentially to the most of the hemisphere on the left side. Now, that was very dramatic to see this. And uh, without treatment, um, if you look at uh, overall numbers, uh, stroke this large uh, mortality of about 40% in the next three months. Although the team at Henry Ford Macomb Hospital was able to administer TPA in time, the clot was too large to be affected by the drug. Now the team at Macomb will discuss the next steps with neurologists at Henry Ford's flagship hospital in Detroit. They are part of a larger group of neurologists, ER physicians, neurosurgeons, neurointerventional specialists, and interventional radiologists who work together to deliver care as quickly as possible. This network connects all of Henry Ford's hospitals and medical center ERs throughout the area and ensures every stroke patient is given the best chance of recovery. This group is called the FAST Team, or the Ford Acute Stroke Treatment Team. I believe that we have one of the most advanced systems uh, in managing uh, emergency stroke cases. We have developed a, a, a great network within Henry Ford Health System to really address this issue and uh, the case can be reviewed, the images can be looked at uh, remotely, and uh, we can offer advice either for uh, on-the-spot treatment or for possible transfers, like in the case of Mr. Baker. The FAST team determined that Mr. Baker's best option was to be flown to Henry Ford Hospital in Detroit for a procedure to remove the clot using a catheter. It would be performed by neurosurgeon and neurointerventionalist Dr. Max Cole. They told me that uh, he had a large vessel occlusion and a severe stroke scale, which usually uh, correlates to a very poor prognosis if you can't open the blood vessel. The stroke scale defines what uh, deficits a patient has. And so the more deficits, the higher number. And anything greater than 12 signifies a severe stroke. And he had about a 20. Basically, after I had stroke, I believe I blacked out until we got on the um, helicopter pad. And uh, we, we waited a bit for the helicopter to take off, and I just said, my God, just get me there. I don't think I did much, much more than uh, get there and black out. After arriving by helicopter, 
Mr. Baker is rushed into the ER. Dr. Cool and his team are waiting for him just steps away. As each second ticks by, the team prepares Mr. Baker for a procedure to reverse his stroke. He was unable to talk. He, wasn't, he was unable to move his right side. He was triaged through our emergency department and then immediately up to our angio suite. From the end of Astro standpoint, you try and evaluate where the occlusion is and then try and recanalize it or reopen it. And there's different devices that we can use, but the most effective one is a stent thrombectomy device where you go in and the stent expands through the clot and immediately restores blood flow, kind of bypasses it, and then you can then use that to pull or retrieve the clot. In Mr. Baker's case, uh, we had to use a large bore suction aspiration device. It's almost like a vacuum cleaner. You take the catheter up there, hook it to negative pressure, and it aspirates the clot out. Similar to an angioplasty for heart disease patients, these stroke interventions use catheters to travel from the groin into the affected blood vessels. Stents and clot-removing tools open up the blocked pathways and restore blood flow to the brain. With this procedure, doctors can extend the time available for treatment from 90 minutes to several hours. From uh, symptom onset to start of endovascular th therapy, we have six hours total, zero to six hours. So in the majority of these patients, uh, intravenous TPA will be given before uh, the endovascular therapy is started. But uh, recovery after stroke is, uh, very, is dependent of several factors, uh, stroke severity being the main one. So the, the more severe the stroke, the less complete the recovery is. You can view this uh, so-called emergency treatment for stroke as uh, your single and only chance to really uh, reverse the effect of the stroke. That is uh, the, the aim behind it. The procedure to reverse his stroke proved successful. Amazingly, just days after his brain attack, he left the hospital with very few health restrictions. Today, the stroke team meets with Mr. Baker seven weeks after his stroke. Hi, nice to see you. How are you? Hello, how are you? How are you? So this is about seven weeks from your episode. Yes. We have some uh, pictures we can show you to review kind of the anatomy. And then I think Dr. Mintz is here would like to just do a, a quick exam also to see where you are at right now. How are you feeling? So he was in the hospital and pretty sick for a couple days even after our procedure. He had improvement with his motor exam, but he did have some speech difficulty, uh, especially with fluency. Um, he was subsequently discharged, and for several weeks he worked with physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy. Um, functionally, he was very good. He, he's a little bit frustrated with his speech, the fluency, but he was following commands very well. He understood everything and his motor exam is intact, you know, good strength everywhere. Stroke is a very mysterious disease and even though we are very excited when we see early improvement, we have learned to temper our approach and we are never too excited, never too disappointed, but uh, try to do the best for the patient at all times. When we come back, another stroke patient arrives at Henry Ford Hospital for this critical treatment. To learn more about the Henry Ford Stroke Center, go to henryford.com slash stroke. You can also make an appointment. There are over 34,000 Daves in Southeast Michigan. Big Daves, medium Daves, baby Daves. At Henry Ford Health System, we're inspired by every Dave out there and every Shannon, Sharice, Miguel, and Ahmed. Because no matter your name, we believe care should be built around you, not someone like you or near you, but care designed for just one person, you. Henry Ford Health System, all for you. No matter what the cause or situation, every stroke has one thing in common. 
When you have one, every minute counts. The longer you wait to get treatment, the less likely the treatment will work. For Mr. Ken Burgess, his stroke caught him off guard. If not for the persistence of his family, he might have ignored the symptoms, creating permanent damage or even worse. Me and my wife was out doing public cart witnessing on Davidson. I felt dizzy, and I had just drove there. I felt dizzy, next time I found I was on the ground. So she said, could you get up? I said, yeah, but I couldn't get up. As his stroke progressed, Mr. Burgess could not raise his arm or speak clearly. With every passing second, he was losing brain cells, risking permanent damage. Fortunately, his wife persuaded him to go to Henry Ford Hospital, where they recognized immediately he was having a stroke. I said, well, I'll be all right. Just take me home. She said, no, let me go. Let me take you to the doctor, to the hospital. We need to go to the hospital. And that's when she said, try to raise your hand. And I couldn't do it. I'm looking. I said, why am my hand not moving? So she was trying to help me see something ain't right. You can't even lift your hand. And I was like, like tell my hand to make a fist, and it wasn't happening. So I knew something was not working. I said, okay, no problem. Let's go. <laughs> he arrived at the hospital on a quiet Sunday. As the team recognized a stroke was underway, the FAST team was activated, calling in the interventional surgeons and neurologists who will need to prepare as quickly as possible to save his life. The clock is ticking from the very moment the clot blocks the vessel and the stroke starts happening. And obviously, the entire process is against the clock. So you're aware of the seconds and minutes passing throughout the entire process. After evaluating his condition, doctors determined his clot needed more intensive intervention than standard TPA treatment. His best chance for a full recovery was for a procedure that would remove the clot in his brain. Within a half hour, Dr. Horia Marin and his team are already at work to clear the clot which caused the stroke. As they work, they talk to Mr. Burgess to see how their efforts have helped him recover. Everything okay? Yeah. Tell me your name. Full name. Okay, very good. He was awake throughout the entire procedure and this is what we try to, to have if uh, the patient can tolerate the procedure, which is not the easiest one to go through. We want the patient to be able to collaborate. It also tells us the improvements or the setbacks that happen. Um, we were very happy with Mr. Burgess because he, we could see immediate improvement. Almost done. We're done with the procedure and the clock is out, so we're just hanging there for another minute. In less than four hours since his stroke began, his clot has been removed and his symptoms of paralysis and slurred speech have been erased. Mr. Burgess's rapid recovery is emotional for everyone involved, even his physicians. It is quite impressive. We had the satisfaction of seeing immediate improvement. Uh, we were very happy to see that. And uh, he came paralyzed and now he can move. It was very impressive. Good morning, Mr. Burgess. How are you doing today? Good morning, And now, just 48 hours after his stroke, doctors visit with Mr. Burgess to see how he is doing. You remember the procedure, yeah, I So you remember said, everything yeah. that happened? They said it, but it was a blockage. They were gonna go up into my brain and pull it out. Okay. Uh, they're gonna go through my groin and go up. They said my head was gonna be hot. Just breathe. So I remember the miles and my kids were going. Just breathe. So oxygen can go to the muscles and helps the pain. But uh, other than that, it was fine. We uh, had the anesthesia doctor. They gave you some relaxing medication, but a little bit. They wanted me to be. A you were awake, so yeah. So I was aware. I was aware of everything. This is great results. We love seeing what we see. We need to apply treatment to make sure that this doesn't happen again. Right. Right. And then... Well, I appreciate y'all did an excellent job. Thank you. Okay. Uh, excellent job. And I really appreciate the technology that they had and the doctor that was there. And after talking to others who you know, had relatives who have had strokes, who didn't know, they didn't go, they're still dealing with the paralysis. And some of them still not doing well. So that window 
that I got in within that six hours was very crucial. And I appreciate that I listened to my wife. And if she would have took me home, like I said, one of the nurses told me, if you would have went home, you would not have had no mobility probably the rest of your life on that side. It could have been a whole different scenario. And I'm thankful it wasn't. When we come back, Mr. Baker makes an emotional return to see his physicians, and we'll hear from one of the leading stroke researchers on the treatments that have changed the field of stroke care. We'll be right back. Message your doctor with any question. Health when you need it. With hours that work for you. Early and late appointments, same-day care, online test results. Together, we can make health care your way. Call, click, or come in. We're Henry Ford. Together, we can. For the last two decades, your best chance of surviving a stroke meant finding the right care quickly. This care most often involved receiving TPA within the first four hours after symptoms begin. This drug greatly improved the outcomes for stroke patients, and it was pioneered right here at Henry Ford Hospital, the primary site for the drug's clinical trial. The history of stroke care at Henry Ford is really uh, goes back to the beginning of our department. Uh, neurology became an independent department in 1981, and our first chair, Dr. Michael Welch, was a neurologist who is very prominent nationally and internationally in stroke research and it was his intent uh, to have stroke research be a focus for the department as well as providing cutting-edge stroke care. Not only are doctors working on the leading stroke treatments for today, they're also working on helping patients who've been living with the effects of strokes for years. One of the foremost leaders in worldwide stroke research is Dr. Michael Cha. His work with stem cells could lead to huge leaps in stroke care and recovery. You know, you have 790,000 people a year getting strokes, and you see you're walking around, and then suddenly you're a completely transformed person because you have a stroke. Henry Ford Hospital was the coordinating national center for the TPA studies, so that created a tremendous energy of, of opportunity to, to really do some very first-rate work. And we were responsible for the TPA study, and we, uh, we are responsible for the area of stem cells for the treatment of neurologic disease, restorative neurology, and many other areas. The research Dr. Chop and his team are focusing on involves the use of stem cells and other drugs to rebuild the brain after a stroke. Although this may be years away from clinical use, one patient who benefited from Henry Ford's immediate and quick treatment of his stroke is Ken Burgess. Today he returns to show his doctors a truly remarkable recovery. Well, we're very happy that you were uh, able to come, that we were able to give you the treatment. What we were discussing last time is that it is very important for people to be able to come in as fast as you did in order to have the best possible outcome. I don't know what's your opinion about this. In view of others that I've talked to that have had strokes, um, some didn't get in as soon as they should have, yeah. and because of that, they still got paralysis. But every minute counts, as we say, and every minute lost is more brain that, that is injured. And uh, in your case, working fast and coming fast allowed us to have very little injury to the point that it is maybe imperceptible to others and that you're able to function, but maybe you are able to, to feel something. It's about 90% of my energy is back, but it's going to take a while. The thing is, um, the fact that I'm mobile, I appreciate that because I look at different ones who are not and it could have been a whole different story. I could have been in a wheelchair and a, a lot of other things. And I reflect on that a lot and appreciate it a lot. Being in the right place at the right time with the right people at hand. Like Mr. Burgess, Patrick Baker is ready to put his stroke behind him. 
He returns today less than five months after his stroke to see if doctors will clear him for a return to work. Very good. And otherwise you are doing everything on your own for yourself? Yes. You're yes, I'm back driving. In driving, yeah. independent, with minimal uh, consequences of the stroke. This should not be affecting your ability to work. Do you feel that you need any... The odd enough part about this whole thing is that uh, something like this happened to me who's somebody that's fairly healthy. Uh, so there's not, it's not big markers on me. It's you know, not smoking, not drinking, anything like that, or bad uh, habits. So I don't know, it's, it's tough because there's a, lot of, there's a lot of right things that I did all along, and it happened anyways. I'm about 85% of uh, good shape these days, um, and uh, looking forward to getting back to work. Just like to say thank you to them. The way that I'm able to apply myself uh, as a person um, around the house as well as uh, in my job. Certainly it feels like a second chance. Time loss is brain loss. In fact, in just the time you've spent watching this episode, 45 people may have suffered a stroke. If you believe you or someone close to you are experiencing a stroke, it's important to think fast. Look at the face. Is there difficulty smiling? Can both arms be lifted fully in the air? Speech, are words slurred or have they stopped entirely? If so, time is the most important factor for surviving a stroke. Call 911 and get to an ER immediately. And remember, all Henry Ford ERs administer TPA and can connect you to comprehensive endovascular care. To learn more about their program, go to henryford.com slash stroke. You can also make an appointment. We'll be right back. There are over 34,000 Daves in Southeast Michigan. Big Daves, medium Daves, baby Daves. At Henry Ford Health System, we're inspired by every Dave out there and every Shannon, Sharice, Miguel, and Ahmed. Because no matter your name, we believe care should be built around you. Not someone like you or near you, but care designed for just one person, you. Henry Ford Health System, all for you.